Hey everyone, Bernard Snyder here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to this cool discussion topic about why I own over 11,000 CDs. So I'm constantly getting asked questions about this and I even get comments made that I can't possibly listen to them all before I die or that how do I find the time to listen to them all? People even enjoy doing the math on these things trying to prove to me that I can't listen to them all before I die. But for me at least the point is not about listening to every single CD all of the time. So join me though is I'm going to break down and explain why I own a collection of over 11,000 CDs. Before we jump into this though, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by turning on notifications, you're gonna stay up to date on really cool episodes just like this with why I own a collection of over 11,000 CDs. And so let's go ahead and jump into this. To start though, I just wanna give a little bit of background here that I started collecting in 1989 when I was 13 years old and I bought my first uh, cassette myself. Not something that uh, you know I'd gotten from an older brother or whatever. Uh, this was Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood on cassette. Goes back that far to 1989. So I've been collecting at this point for 33 years which with 11,000 CDs, that is an average of 333 uh, CDs a year. And I didn't even start with uh, CDs right away. I moved into that to about 1990, so it might be a little bit more. But um, my love of music does go back further than that. And it goes into the early 80s or so, but I didn't actually start collecting until 1989. Now, every album in the collection uh, was selected and bought for a specific reason. So there's nothing in here that I own that I don't want. I don't have anything in here that's just taken up space or dust or whatever you wanna call it. Um, none of it was something from somebody else's collection. I have heard about people going and buying say their best friend's collection and suddenly having a collection of 5,000 CDs, you know, instant collection, there it is, you have it kind of a thing. None of mine is that way. I bought everything myself. It was all for specific reasons. So everything that is in here is something that I want. Now, just for giggles, let's go ahead and do the math as so many people love doing uh, on this. If I have 11,000 CDs, um, and I'm not gonna get into which ones are single disc versus doubles, because obviously double albums, even more than 11,000 are you know, the, the total number. But let's say 11,000 and let's take the average of 45 minutes an album, because some are 30, some are an hour, some are longer, et cetera, right? But this is just so we can do some math here. So if we take 11,000, um, and we multiply it by 45 minutes, we're gonna get 495,000 minutes of music. Now, if we divide that by 60 minutes to get it into hours, we get 8,250 hours of music. Now, again, we wanna get this down to a smaller chunk here, so we divide it by 24 hours in a day to get 343.75 days worth of music. Now that's if I listen to it continuously, 343.75 days that would take, but obviously I can't do that. So let's factor in that I need eight hours of sleep each day. And I would need to add 2,750 hours to that total in order to make this a realistic listening experience. And so I'm gonna divide the 2,750 by 24 hours. So I need to add 114.5 days to that original 343.75 days worth of music, uh, totaling 458.25 days that it would take. So that would equal one year, 93.25 days of listening time that it would take to do this entire collection. So. That's totally doable. If I listened constantly, stopping to sleep eight hours each day, I could do this in one year and 93.25 days. So, you know, when I retire, maybe I will start at the very beginning and run all the way through the end just to prove all you guys out there wrong that I can listen to all my music in one year. But anyway, so I've been able to prove that I actually can listen to every album uh, before I die. But why do I own a collection of 11,000 CDs? It is certainly not to sit down and listen to them from start to finish, from A to Z and so forth. 
for me at least, it's all about having a library of music. And if you've watched my channel, you know that I've talked a lot about that on here, but I really wanna kinda of get into uh, the idea of what that means to have a library of music. So basically, anything that I can think of, anything that I can desire, I have in my collection. And I'm, again, I'm not just buying random stuff to throw in there because I might one day think about it. I'm buying it for a specific reason at that time, and it's just growing on its own. So, you know, if I hear that a band is going on tour and that sparks my interest, I'm like, oh, hey, I want to go check that band out. I can pull out some of their music and listen to it and warm up for that concert, that sort of stuff. If I read about the passing of a famous band member, and let's face it, we're hearing a lot about that these days, I can get you know a bit nostalgic for their music and go back and listen to a whole bunch of great stuff and celebrate that artist. Uh, if I find out a band is releasing a brand new album and I wanna go back and visit their older albums in the catalog, I can go listen to them. Uh, if I hear that a band has added a brand new member and I wanna know what it is that that person is gonna bring to the mix and maybe how it is that they're gonna change. Motley Crue just added John Five as a guitar player. And so I can go pull out stuff that John Five has done and listen to how it is that he is gonna influence the band. So I've got that as an option. And if I suddenly start, um, you know, thinking about, you know, my favorite band and getting excited about that, but, you know, I own everything that they've done, then I could venture into side projects, solo albums, things of that nature, and listen to all of that. And so all of those reasons, and of course many more, is why I own a collection of 11,000 CDs and more. Um, at this point, I'd like to do a couple examples of this to really get into it to show you. So let me reset up here and I will do that. All right, so I've repositioned here because I thought let's do uh, two different examples. Let's do one from the 80s, let's do one from the 70s. So wearing a docking shirt, I thought, why not? Let's uh, think about docking here. And this all comes about because George Lynch just announced that uh, his band Lynch Mom has a brand new album coming out. And that made me get excited for all things George Lynch. Now, as part of my collection, the way I break things down is this area here happens to be all my glam metal stuff. And that's where I put uh, Dokken, George Lynch, Lynch Mob, all that sort of stuff. But I also sometimes break out collections like this into boxes that hold uh, 30 CDs themselves so that I actually have a collection. I can just pull the whole box out and have it. And this one in particular has uh, the Dokken CDs, actually I'll pull that back up for you guys. So it's got a whole bunch of Dokken CDs, it's got some solo Dokken, it's got some of the Lynch Mob in here, some of the solo George Lynch and other side projects and things. So uh, first thing though is, as I mentioned, Lynch Mob has a brand new album. So stuff that I've got on the wall here, and I've got a whole bunch that are there, but you know, the two classic Lynch Mob albums are here, and I can pull those out and I can listen to those and so forth. One of the things being that with the second Lynch Mob album, which was a self-titled album, we had Robert Mason singing on it. And while also tying in and connecting to George Lynch and even the band Dokken, those guys did the project, The End. And this is the three guys of Dokken with new singer in place of Dokken, Robert Mason. But since you've got Mick Brown on drums as part of this and George Lynch on guitar and Robert Mason, you've actually got three guys from the second Lynch Mob album. So whether you're thinking of this as Lynch Mob, you know, just under a different name, or you're thinking about it as Dokken under a different name, you've got that. And back here in the corner, it's behind me, you can't really see me pulling it out, but uh, the, the three guys in Dokken attempted to do a project called TNN or Tooth and Nail and didn't really take off for them. But again, it was uh, the three remaining guys of Dokken without Don Dokken and they were going out and doing that. So there's a lot of different little side projects and things of that nature. Um, I've also got in here George Lynch solo and then over in the box, I've got some of his side projects like Ultraphobic um, or Phonics, sorry. 
Um, and that this is a cool one because this actually has Corey Glover of Living Color. Um, he's done the Lynch Pilsen album with uh, Jeff Pilsen, you know, fellow Dokken member and so forth. Uh, most recent um, instrumental album that he did, which is called Seamless. And of course, I could just go on and on and on. But that gives you an idea about how I can branch out with this. And even then, tangents happen from it when I'm listening to the stuff that has Jeff Pilsen involved with George Lynch on it. Then I start thinking about other great guitar players and things. And one of the things that comes up is Black Swan, which has Jeff Pilsen in it, but we've got Red Beach of Winger on the guitar here. And that might take me off in a whole tangent with Winger, and I've got plenty of that to go. And you can see how the snowball effect can happen going down that rabbit hole, so to speak, and having the library of music with all these different side projects, solo albums, full collections by a band and so forth, make it so much fun. Okay, as a second example, I mentioned that I wanted to do one from the 70s. One of my favorite bands out of the 70s is Deep Purple. And of course, lots and lots of side projects, offshoots, things of that nature have happened with that band and you could go in so many different directions, whether you're doing it based on Richie Blackmore and going down Rainbow and everything like that, or you're doing it with Ian Gillen and going down Black Sabbath and other projects that he's been involved in and solo stuff and so forth. But recently Deep Purple had announced that longtime guitarist Steve Morse was out of the band, one of my favorite members of Deep Purple throughout all their many different lineups. So they then bring in new guitar player Simon McBride and both I'm excited and sad because I love Steve Morse, but at the same time, I'm excited to see what kind of a new flavor is brought to Deep Purple. Now, like the previous one that I ran through with Doc and I have other ways that I keep that stuff and I have boxes like these that each hold 90 CDs. And let me take the lid off this and hold this back up and you can see, not quite 90 yet, but this is all Deep Purple and Deep Purple related stuff. Not everything is in here because some of the stuff like the Black Sabbath album, Born Again, that Ian Gillen did is actually in a Black Sabbath collection. So just, you know, depends on how I decide to break stuff up. But this is all the stuff that is outright related to Deep Purple. And so, you know, I can come in here and pull out the last album that Steve Morris did and listen to that and enjoy it. Um, I can even jump into, you know, a best of and just listen to the hits and things of that nature. But if I wanna check out um, what the new guitar player is, one of the things I did was I immediately went out and bought his latest solo album called The Fighter. And I wanted to check that out. And this is more blues-based uh, hard rock than uh, straight up rock music. So I'm not exactly sure how it is going to tie in and relate to Deep Purple, although I'm hearing good things about them being in the studio. Um, and I've got other great things in here because one of the things I found out was that Simon McBride had played with Don Airy. That's where he came from. So he's on the Don Airy solo album that's called One of a Kind, and he's on the live album uh, that came out before that. So, um, you know, there was immediately three things that I was able to listen to that had Simon McBride on it that are related in time because Don Airy also being in Deep Purple. And then I can, from that, I can just, of course, go off into the many, many directions of Deep Purple and, uh, you know, have fun with that. But while I'm waiting to hear that new Deep Purple music, I've got something that can fill that interest and so forth. And again, just another reason why having a collection of 11,000 CDs uh, and having everything that is within it be something that I want uh, to be that library of music works for me at least. So that's why I've got that collection and hopefully that gives you some insight into it and whether or not it uh, causes you to decide to do the same thing or just help understand why somebody you know might have that many CDs. I hope you enjoyed the video. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.